What is Jainism? Jainism is one of the three major ancient religions of India, the other two are Hinduism and Buddhism. Jainism's roots go back to at least the mid-first century BCE. Although Hinduism and Buddhism are more famous and dominant, Jainism is still an integral part of Indian culture today. Jainism originated in northern India and spread from there to the south, but how it began is unclear. Its founder is often, inaccurately, identified as the sage Vardhamana, better known as Mahavira, but he is actually only the 24th Tuthankara, or Ford Builder, of Jainism. The core teaching of Jainism is that the path to enlightenment is through nonviolence and reducing harm to living things, including plants and animals. This is because for the Jains, all living things, such as plants and animals, have souls just as humans do. This explains why Jains are strict vegetarians, so strict, in fact, that eating root vegetables is not allowed because removing the root would kill the plant. However, Jains can eat vegetables that grow above the ground because they can be picked while leaving the rest of the plant intact. It is also interesting to note that in complete dedication to non-violence, the highest-ranked Jain monks and nuns avoid swatting at mosquitoes or sweeping a path on the floor so they do not step on ants. Like Hindus and Buddhists, Jains believe in reincarnation. Hence, for the Jains too, the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth is determined by one's karma. It is important to note that Jains believe that bad karma is caused by harming living things. Thus, according to Jains, for us to avoid bad karma, we must practice ahimsa, a strict code of nonviolence, or the ethical practice of not harming other living beings. It is important to note that Jainism is a non-theistic religion in that it does not advocate a belief in a creator god, but in higher beings, or devas, which are mortal, and in the concept of karma directing one's present life and future incarnations. However, for the Jains, the devas have no power over a person and are not sought for guidance or assistance in freeing one's self from karmic bondage. In Jainism, it is up to each individual to attain salvation, defined as the release from the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, that is, samsara, by adhering to a strict spiritual and ethical code of behavior. This code is based on the five vows articulated in the foundational work, the Tattvatha Sutra, namely Ahimsa, or non-violence Satya, or speaking the truth Asteya, or non-stealing Brahmacharya, or chastity or faithfulness to a spouse. Aparigraha, or non-attachment. The five vows direct one's thoughts and behavior since it is believed that as one thinks, so will one do. For the Jains, therefore, it is not enough to simply abstain from violence or lying or stealing, one must not even think of such things. According to the Jains, if one adheres to this discipline, one will escape the cycle of samsara and achieve liberation. And once one has accomplished this, one becomes a Tuthankara, a ford builder, as in, one who builds a ford or bridge over a river, who can show others how to securely cross the currents of life by shedding desire, freeing oneself from ignorance, and refusing the temptations of the world. Another interesting aspect of Jainism, which was also held by Chavaka, is an emphasis on the limitations of perspective. This explains why for the Jains, the human person cannot attain objective truth. The Jains use the famous parable of the elephant and the five blind men to illustrate this problem. As is well known, each of the blind men, summoned by the king to define an elephant which stands before them, touch different parts of the animal and come to their own conclusions. To one, who touches the ears, an elephant is a large fan, to another who touches a leg, it is a stout post, to another, who touches the side, it is a wall, and so on. As we can see, 
Each blind man is limited by perspective and individual interpretation in the same way each human being is by the limits of what they can understand in their dreaming state of subjective values, ignorance, and illusion. On Jain Scriptures, Sect, and Practices According to Jainism, in order to awaken and achieve liberation from matter, one must take the five vows and then follow through with actions which proceed from them. These actions lead one on a 14-stage path from ignorance and bondage to enlightenment and freedom. This path is suggested by the Jain scriptures, the Agamas and, according to some, Puvos, believed to have been heard from the universe and transmitted orally from generation to generation by the Tithankaras. Besides the Tattvatha Sutra, there are also other scriptures, not accepted by all Jains, such as the Upangas, Cheta Sutras, Mula Sutras, Prakana Sutras, and Kulika Sutras, which were passed down by oral tradition until committed to writing. Jains are divided into two primary sects, though there are others, the Dagambra, or sky-clad, and the Svetambra, or white-clad, whose views of the faith differ significantly in that the Dagambra are more orthodox, reject the authoritative Svetambra canon of scripture, believe that only men can attain liberation and that women must wait until they are incarnated as a male to do so, and their monks go naked, rejecting even the need for clothing in keeping with the tradition that Mahavira and his first eleven disciples owned nothing and wore nothing. The Svetambra clergy, on the other hand, wear white, seamless clothing, believe they have retained most of the original scriptures transmitted by Mahavira, and recognize that women can attain liberation as well as men. This liberation, as noted, is achieved in 14 steps which are based on the scriptures and the five vows, namely. Stage 1. The soul languishes in darkness, ignorant of its true nature, and a slave to passions and illusion. Stage 2. The soul catches a glimpse of truth, but is too mired in illusion to retain it. Stage 3. The soul recognizes its own bondage and tries to break free, but is still bound to attachments and illusion and falls backwards to stage 1. Stage 4. The soul, having recognized its bondage, yearns to break free again, but is suppressing, rather than eliminating, its attachments and so remains bound. Stage 5. The soul has a flash of enlightenment and understands it must take the five vows and adhere to them in order to free itself from bondage. Stage 6 The soul is able to restrain its attachments and passions to a degree through the discipline of the five vows. Stage 7 The soul overcomes spiritual lethargy and is strengthened through meditation and observance of the five vows. Self-awareness grows as well as a grander vision of the nature of the soul itself and reality. Stage 8 Hurtful karma is discarded, self-control perfected, and deeper understanding achieved. Stage 9 More karmic debt is eliminated through conscious living and greater spiritual insight is attained. Stage 10 At this stage, one has eliminated attachments almost completely, but is still attached to the concept of one's body as oneself. This is understood as greed for a body, which one must overcome in order to progress. Stage 11 Here, one works on eliminating the identification of the self with the body and releasing all other attachments. One recognizes the transient nature of those people and objects one is attached to and releases them. Stage 12 All of the karma-producing passions have been eliminated at this point, including one's attachment to the body. Stage 13 Recognizing fully the nature of reality and of the soul, one engages in deep meditation to withdraw from all activity which might result in karma-producing passions and backsliding to an earlier stage. And stage 14. As one approaches death, one is freed from all karmic debt and experiences the liberation of moksha, complete understanding, wisdom, 
and total freedom from bondage. The soul is freed and will never be incarnated again on the earthly plane to experience suffering and death.